Since you live with a big group of cats, I assume your inner catologist is tempted to make observations and hypotheses about their behavior. And they about us. Can you share some of them? <laughs> P.S. The cats may share the same about you if they wish. Really? You're already always jumping the punchline, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I mean, I find that kind of cool. That's, yeah. That is almost exactly what I said, and I sure hadn't seen it. No, you hadn't. No, you hadn't. Um, yeah, so much, right? So much. So what, there's, I don't know, we could come up with a few things off the top of our heads. The one, the one thing when I saw that that I thought um, that I had been surprised at when I noticed this, and this is not from our current crew of cats. Um, uh, actually, actually, one of the cats, Tesla, um, who is our who is our black cat, our eldest cat, who will be ten this year? Um, named after the dude, not the car. Named after the dude, not the car. Um, when we ha still had, when we do still have him, and um, and Pico and Crenshaw, who were named after the Los Angeles streets, obviously, um, they had a hierarchy. So I'm always fascinated by the hierarchies the cats set up. Um, and two things about their hierarchy were not as I would have expected if I had been watching, say, Wild Baboons or something. Uh, one of which was they seem to have different hierarchies for different situations. So like displacement moves on the couch or on someone's lap, a different cat would have different priority, would be able to displace someone. Whereas at the food dish, um, and I can't even remember at this point, probably Crenshaw always had primacy at the food dish and one of the other two younger guys had primacy um, on laps. But also in each of these hierarchies where you could actually watch it, it was circular. It wasn't linear. And, you know, almost all of the work on territoriality and hierarchy and dominance hierarchies um, is, well, one is that you've got separate male and female hierarchies where you've got um, a social situation such that you've got multiple of both sexes, um, but they're almost always described as linear and sometimes a little bit recursive, or like you inherit your mother's, um, and so you can you can jump the line. Um, but if we had three cats, you know, A might be dominant to B, B dominant to C, and C dominant to A, which sounds like it's not possible, but um, it kind of was. All right. Uh the hypothesis I can't get past, which actually puts me in a tense situation with other members of my family, is that I believe <laughs> the cats don't know their names. Um, and everyone else in my family is of the belief, without the ability to demonstrate it, that they uh, react, that they respond to their names in some way that indicates recognition. I believe that one of our cats has no understanding that names exist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that one of our cats does know his name, and that the third cat, the the jury is somewhat out on that. Yes, I believe <laughs> that no domestic cat knows their name, and the domestic cat owners would For, be shocked to discover this. Furthermore, you think that our dog knows the cat's names. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the dog knows a lot. The dog's not there. <laughs> no, the dog, I don't know where the dog is going. But, oh. um, yeah, the dog never calls the cats by name, but she knows them. And she knows her own name, but yeah, no, this, this, this we're in agreement on. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's all you got. Okay, <laughs> okay, we should do a cat episode at some point. We could, we could do that. Yeah.